Uh, good evening, friends. Uh, it is a pleasure to welcome you all to the first India Power Talk of the new year 2022. And for our new topical focus, we are launching the talk series India of the Future, featuring global thought leaders and innovators who can provide actionable insights into the potential development in certain specific areas that could shape India of tomorrow. We would be looking at trending shapes the entire world and what that means for India. I am pleased to mention that India of the Future series is being organized in association with the Indo-American Chamber of Commerce, Andhra Pradesh and Telangana State Chapter in India. To kick off this new series, we have chosen the topic of global higher education. What do students need to prepare for our fast changing world? Would we offer them uniform curriculums, experiences and guidance? And in particular, role of community colleges. Ideally, studying at a university or college should open a person's mind and lay the foundation for critical thinking and adaptation to new demands as well as participation in democracy. Our guest today is an extraordinary, well-qualified to speak on this topic. Since 2014, Dr. Denise Haftalin has served as the eighth president of Salt Lake Community College in the state of Utah. In total, she has served SLCC students, faculty and staff for nearly three decades. Dr. Dinis, welcome and thank you for joining us on our new series, India of the Future. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, Dinis, higher education is so important for all over the world and especially when it comes to enabling people to advance in society. What are the biggest trends you see in education? Well, I'll speak mostly from a community college perspective, given that's been my role for the last three decades, although I have experience in some of the other universities and selective and public and private as well. But I think it's what you said earlier in the introduction, this idea of giving folks an opportunity wherever they are in society to open up their mind, to be exposed to new ideas and to have a place where they can safely explore and think and inquire um, with the help of colleagues and kind of co-construction of knowledge with their faculty. So for me, it's a real opportunity for folks to be able to really think differently, be exposed to new ideas and move forward in that way. What could change due to the global pandemic, according to you? Well, I think the, um, I think what changed for Salt Lake Community College certainly was the, the pace with which we accepted innovation. So oftentimes I think people are reluctant to change because they think they have the time and they wanna do pilots and they wanna get a, a proof of concept and they wanna work, work, work before they commit too much to one thing. And when the pandemic uh, hit us so quickly in March of 2020, we didn't have time for proof of concept. We didn't have time for any of that. So this idea of moving rapidly without a lot of certainty and being willing to fail and then fail again and then fail again until you could find the right way to do something. I think that opened up people's minds toward innovation and it relaxed some of the concerns about innovation or the fear and gave people you know, an experience that was you know, not perfect by any means and certainly stressful, but it showed them how, how quickly innovation could really change um, the dynamic around them. And I think that was a really great lesson that we all learned. No, my question is, and what attra really attracted you to the community college? Because you have spent almost three decades there. And, and why Salt Lake City College specifically? Well, I think if you're familiar at all with the American higher education system, we have um, what I would call like a three-tier system. So the community college space, and then maybe more like a state university and then the research university. And that's just the way we've been structured over the years. And different states have actually adopted that structure in a variety of ways. So when I was younger in my career, the, the colleges and universities that I went to were primarily either public or private, fairly selective universities. And many of their focus was on research rather than undergraduate education. Um, when I was in Illinois working at Northwestern University, which I really enjoyed, I, there was a community college near me called Harper Community College, which was mm -hmm. one, named after the um, William Rainey Harper, who was very, very kind of a king in higher education in America. 
And it was there that I realized um, I really went to that position really for utilitarian reasons. It was closer, the commute was better, the salary was better. But what I realized was that the whole focus was different. The focus was on teaching, the classes were small, and the access that students had were, was very, very different. So the, the tuition was so low that any student, almost any student who wanted to get an education was able to afford it. And over the years, that, that opportunity has become more and more important to me as I've seen through, especially during the pandemic, the differences of economic ability or financial security have become so prevalent um, and really has just laid bare some of the inequities that for me, it was really important to be at an institution that was so accessible and so affordable. And that's just kind of stuck with me as we've tried to make that even more so as I've been at the institution. Now, Dennis, you know, as I said, you have served this college for over 30 years now. Uh, if I may ask you, could you please describe some of the most important changes that you have seen during that time? I mean, which 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 has or could have a global impact? So there's a there's a few that um, come to mind. The first one you you mentioned in my bio was called Open Education Resources. So for years, my trajectory has come up through student affairs, which is American higher education would be similar to all of the student support functions. So getting a student admitted and providing them career and academic advising and giving them mental health services if they need it, those kinds of support services. So students were always on my mind. And what I heard a lot over and over again was that they might be able to afford the tuition, but that the book costs, the textbook costs were extra, that just out of the world. And in some cases made learning inaccessible. So probably 10 years or so ago, maybe a little longer, one of our faculty really started getting involved with open education resources, which is just this public domain kind of curated site where really high quality textbooks, learning resources are available to anyone for free. So again, this idea of opening up access to learning to anyone, whether you have money or not, that has been just enormous for Salt Lake Community College. And we've saved students over the last 10 years, we've probably saved students north of $10 million in textbook costs. So that for me is, I'm very proud of that. And I would also say that I think I'm proud of the business partnerships that we have created. So part of a community college mission is being more nimble for what businesses need right then. So if a new company comes into Utah, and needs training in a particular, you know, factory manufacturing skill, diesel skill, whatever it is, the Salt Lake Community College has the, the flexibility and kind of the ethic of being able to work with that business, shape the curriculum, shape the training and deliver it. Would you give one or two examples? How quickly do you really turn around the curriculums? So we have, we have a whole section of our community college called Workforce and Economic Development. And it has, it's really got contract faculty, um, part-time industry people. So it's designed not to be your traditional semester long, sit in the class for 16 weeks, pay a certain tuition. It's much more flexible. So for instance, a company will come to us like a Boeing and say, hey, we've got a whole new plant that we're bringing up you know, in, in North Salt Lake. We need you to train this particular constituent group of our employees on this particular production method. Mm -hmm. So we have lab space that we can convert very quickly. We can build and deconstruct and move things around to accommodate that. And then we have um, a workforce that is not the traditional faculty. It's much more contractual, part-time. So we can deliver that curriculum much quicker. And we do it in a non-credit way so that it's really doesn't, it, it, it's much more fluid and dynamic. It's very interesting because I, I don't think so any other university globally has that kind of a, a capability to quickly turn around the curriculums uh, that meets the industry, industry requirement. I mean, that, that to my mind is one of the biggest uh, gap between industry and education. Community colleges have two distinct missions. One is um, 
the more general education, first two years of a, of a baccalaureate degree, very traditional. And a lot of our students do that. They come to us for the first two years and then they move on to a university to get a baccalaureate degree or beyond. But 30% to 40% of our mission is that business, you know, economic development, workforce training, very skills focused, very flexible. And I think you're right, that is a key to community colleges. And I think it's what has made community colleges so valuable in America. Uh, do you think universities need to move towards uniform curriculum in higher education? And particularly, and, uh, you know, uh, gradually when in school curriculums also, because we are create, we're talking of creating global leaders, be it business, be it politics or otherwise. In some ways, I see that more specifically in perhaps masters of business programs or law programs or public administration yes. programs at a higher level. I think the trick, at least in America and perhaps other places, will be um, universities adapting their curriculum and individual faculty feeling comfortable um, being kind of forced, quote unquote, into a particular curriculum. There's so much academic freedom. There's so much um, individual research interest Understood. built into America research universities that um, a certain, like a common curriculum could be, can be very difficult to attain. I, I do think, I do think though, um, there is room there perhaps, as I mentioned, like in executive MBA programs or some of the, the more post masters baccalaureate degrees, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. I do think that, um, I think it would be, it's very clear <laughs> that at least to me, that we have globally very common problems that we need to solve together yeah. as one world. Um, and I think that the opportunity for faculty to work together on what that would look like is just mind blowing. That would be amazing to see and watch happen. Um, if we could corral, if we could harness that energy and make that happen, I think that would be remarkable. I think the practical application of that may be the sticking point. Sure. No, because particularly the pandemic has made all the doctors around the world work together. The scientists work together. The technologists yes. are working together. So to my mind, when we are looking at just the world being a one village, uh, I, I guess education is the only enabler. Uh, if And if that is uh, at least to some extent common, it would help the future leaders. That was I, That's what I felt. Well, and I think what I like even more about the idea is not even necessarily that the curriculum is perfectly uniform, but I love the idea that we're actually talking across nations. Yes, absolutely. And taking a perspective that's global versus national. Um, and, you know, we've seen those philosophical debates swing in terms of should we be looking globally or should we be looking internally? Um, so even just that idea, I think, is a really important one to continue to talk about. Uh, now, looking back again, uh, you know, you have done in SLCC, you have done an incredible work. Now, uh, what uh, could you please share one or two top accomplishments which, which has made you really the happiest person or happiest dean? Um, I think I think two accomplishments haven't actually been realized yet, but they're they're relatively new. So, mm -hmm. um, at community colleges in U in America, not typically those have been institutions where students have come, taken a class, and then gone away. Very commuter based. Um, whereas our universities, as you might know, have residential halls and students yeah. live on campus. The the effect of living on campus, the impact of living on campus actually is very strongly correlated to completion and success. So Salt Lake Community College is breaking ground in two months for our first residential hall wow. at, the, at the community college. And for many institutions, that won't feel like a big deal. But for Salt Lake Community College, it's been a long time coming. We've, we've had administrations and, and um, leaders that haven't really seen that as a completion initiative. Um, and we, we now realize with the affordable housing issues that we're facing in Utah, with the completion and success correlations that we know that happens, we're gonna have that ability to house students on our campus. 
And we have many, many first generation students. Neither parent was able to go to college for some reason. Now those students will have an environment, affordable environment that they can live in safely. They can have access to services. They're right on campus. And I think that's gonna be really important for some of our uh, students to have that experience. So that's one. I think the other um, partnership that's new and again, just coming into fruition is we're building a new building. So Salt Lake Community College alongside the University of Utah, which is the research in university in Salt Lake County. We're actually building a building together and we're gonna be housed both the community college and the research university in one building. And it's serving a portion of our county, which is fairly far away uh, distance wise from the research university. So it gives again, access to either a community college associate degree or a, and or a university degree, but it's more efficient, it's less expensive, it's more accessible. Um, and it, you know, it, there's a lot of win-wins there for higher education. I hope that's a model for other um, yes, it is. leaders and other states to do something similar. No, you have been doing really great stuff, uh, Denise, I must say. But uh, just as we talk about the good things, uh, any any moments of frustration? Oh, sure. <laughs> I because think... Education, um, typically, education is some is like an elephant. You know, to move anything, uh, move an elephant, it's, it's a huge task. Yes. I will share that the one thing that we continue to struggle with um, is we look very closely at the racial ethnic demographics of our students. And we look at the retention and completion rates disaggregated by race, ethnicity, and gender. And we see gaps in success and completion rates, which I attribute to institutional barriers that have been put up that have, that have not allowed certain student groups to flourish and thrive like they should. So for me, one of my frustrations is we've been trying to be more diverse, be more inclusive, be more culturally competent and relevant to a variety of students from ethnic and racial backgrounds to allow them to have similar completion rates as their white peers. And we have not, we have not closed those gaps to the extent that I would like to. So the frustration is continually how do we serve all students in a way that they can actually flourish and complete their degree? Denise, uh, looking at other countries, and what do you think are the most important learnings they could draw from your experience at the Salt Lake Community College? And, and in particular, let me ask you, what could India, uh, which is the largest young population uh, or an emerging economy, learn from SLCC? Well, I just think just the model of community colleges, you know, even if you were to just kind of impose community colleges that could then work into those the universities that you have. Um, my sense is that community college model gives more students from more diverse economic backgrounds access to higher education. And so that that in my mind is just fundamental Absolutely. because it shifts the number of people in your economy who have good skills and who have been exposed to strong communication skills, written and oral, critical thinking skills, diverse perspectives. That that can only help a community. And when you've got universities that aren't accessible financially or geographically, that keeps a whole group of people from having that opportunity. So that just just the structure of a community college, I think, is a is a great thing to listen and, and think about. But then within the community college sex, uh, system, I think that business partnership, that connection between real life businesses in the community and what they need and the kind of workers they need and a, and a system that can be dynamic and accommodate those needs quickly. That has been, I, I think, very important for our industry leaders. Uh, this, this has been really a fascinating, uh, you know, talk with you, and there's, there's so much to learn from you. Uh, one more question on a woman uh, or the girl education. Uh, I can't leave you without asking that question. How you know we in in India we have 
a huge amount of women population uh, what would you say uh, to the girls or the other future young young girls well i think uh, from my experience and it's probably very different than a young girl growing up in india but um i think i think women globally and it's not as bad as it used to be but i think there are societal limitations that are sometimes put on externally forced onto young girls about what they can do what they can learn where they can live how they can live um what kind of career they can have if they can even have a career and i would i would encourage all young women to recognize that those are blinders that do not have to exist Correct. that you can you can you can push those away right uh you can if you can be courageous and surround yourself with people who believe in more opportunity and the idea that you can you have an um, enormous potential um so allow yourself to have that advantage any closing comments that you have for this india of the future talk series i just i think it's i applaud you for reaching for looking forward and thinking how do we take what we've learned from the pandemic um and how do we create new structures i think there's there's a lot happening in higher education right now in america not just because of the pandemic but um exacerbated by the pandemic around you know dismantling some of the historic structures that we have kind of reified in higher education and thinking about them in different ways so that we can be more um inclusive in our curriculum and in our learning etc and i i just can't understate that or overstate that i think that's going to be important for everyone globally to recognize that that many of our structures have limited access to certain kinds of people um and have perhaps um normalized other populations as you know as kind of the standard and we should probably be rethinking that yes and really expanding our idea of norms and practices to be able to make sure that we're really interrogating those and making them as open and inclusive as possible uh this this has been really fascinating and thank you so much for your valuable time and insights um it has been a great pleasure talking to you um i would like to thank the indo american chamber of commerce as well as indian chamber of commerce law sikho and the india sme accelerator uh, let me conclude uh, with a humble prayer to the almighty to bestow mankind with the right spirit to fight the coronavirus come out of that be successful and restore peace prosperity and well being please thank you thank you so much it's been a pleasure to have some time with you thank you thank you dinesh